Hello, my name is Akshat Chug. I'm a B.Tech first year student at IIT Bombay. In 2017, JE advanced. I secured All India Rank 2. In this DKT episode, I would like to give you some tips for last minute strategy for JE May and JE advanced. Let's start with maths. The books I personally use for maths, I use the Singed series. Uh, all for all the topics, I use the Singed series. Personally, I believe integration is a very important topic. And other than that, I would say uh, trigonometry is quite important, like because it's used in multiple places. Then uh, probability, probability and P and C again they're very similar to each other, but quite a few questions are asked every year from those topics. Other than that, you know, let's talk about physics. Then in physics, I mainly used H C Verma, and I solved Erodov for mechanics, and I solved B C Pandey for electromagnetism. Other than that, I did uh, previous J questions, and I did previous J questions throughout my whole th- with every single chapter individually instead of doing it all towards the end. And uh, then main main topics in physics, rotational mechanics is a very important topic in physics uh, because it's used everywhere, and many questions are asked from that topic, and it's a difficult topic as well. It's not an easy topic. Then uh, electromagnetism as a whole, it's all very interconnected. So even in that, I think EMI is probably the most important topic. Then uh, heat and thermodynamics, that's a pretty important topic because in it's asked in physics as well as chemistry. So if you do that topic, if you do thermodynamics properly, you'll be able to do it in physics as well as chemistry. So I would definitely put a lot of focus towards that. Optics is uh optics isn't terribly important but pretty easy topic and has a decent number of marks so i would suggest optics as something to do about chemistry in chemistry i would say uh physical chemistry i personally used nrst apart from the most important topics in physical are uh, i would say electrochemistry and ionic equilibrium the very important topics and organic chemistry aldehydes and ketones that is a very important topic and i used ms johan for organic chemistry uh, for inorganic chemistry i used uh, vkj as well and important topics i would say p block is p- um, chemical bonding of course if chemical without chemical bonding inorganic chemistry is pretty much nothing and uh, P block is important apart from that as well. For theory and chemistry, I personally didn't really use any books. Uh, teachers' notes were more than good enough for me. So I can't really help you too much with that. Other than that, uh, some general tips I would give to be uh, be regular in attending. If you're going to a coaching, then be regular in attending that and. Don't miss too many classes. My time management, I would say I manage time. It was basically I went to school almost every day. So every day I used to go to school. Then after coming from school, I would study for a bit and then go for my class. And then I would study after coming from class. So it amounted to around roughly three hours of study apart from coaching. But I used to study in school as well. So I studied around two to three hours in school too. Another thing I would like like to note is like I finished most of my syllabus around December and January. After that, I started revising uh, periodically. I would say around I revise around twice. After that, mostly a lot of revision was done in our class. Uh, that was a very helpful thing. And then that like, mock test is another important thing. I took, I personally took the Fiji IITs. I took that as well as our own uh, Bakhlyal test series was there as well. So because of that, I used to have two tests every week. That was very helpful. I would say because the mock tests really help you gauge how well you are doing. Not just how well you are doing, basically they help you prepare an examination strategy and. Decide on how to approach a paper and helps you improve your temperament because you need to understand how to manage time in your exam as well, uh, which subject to do first, and when you do the subject, how 
we approach it which questions to do first i personally uh, did chemistry first and then maths and then physics looked at ke- the whole paper i just had a glance at the whole paper most of the time i would just do chemistry maths and physics not exactly chemistry maths and physics but i would skip around a bit basically if i'm doing chemistry i i'll do it in order kind of but if i see a question if i'm doing suppose i'm doing questions on the left hand side but i see a question on the right side of the page which is a very easy question or which i just see and i want to do it right away so i'll just do it i won't wait similarly if, if i can see a maths question while i'm doing chemistry i'll just do the maths question uh, uh bubbling is another thing with because omr was a thing last year in advance it's still going to be a thing this year in mains if you're planning to take offline with bubbling uh, the thing i i just i had a regular thing every one hour i would bubble after one hour i would bubble all the questions i've done up to now and after two hours i would bubble and then after two and a half hours i would bubble and then after two and a half hours i would bubble after every question that i solved because in the last half hour ideally you want it to be for revision and for doing the questions that you hadn't been able to do at all if you are not in a coaching i would recommend at least take a plp from some institute because it's kind of not needed but it's well important because you need to be able to judge with something most books aren't exactly enough with just solving books because you have to solve test papers as well getting into a test series is pretty important i would say and the online resources i would say uh, youtube is a great online resource khan academy is a pretty good resource i'm not really sure about other resources i didn't really use too many question papers i personally i just solved the books that come out which have all the questions from previous years i just solved those questions mostly a lot of people do that but a lot of people what they don't do is they don't solve the subjective questions because j isn't going to be subjective there's no need to do that that's what david gun says but i feel like that's kind of copping out because subjective questions they are very good questions and very thought provoking questions and i feel like everyone should do those questions even if that that's not the pattern that's going to come but that still gives you insight into the minds of the people who are making the paper in the actual previous year papers that i solved i solved 2015 paper i solved properly like i gave a proper test we had a test conducted in which uh, when they gave the 2015 and j advanced paper and i had to solve it for 2016 paper actually they would have done that for 2016 paper as well but uh, we had discussed that as soon as the paper happens so we discussed that in class so there was really no point so mains actually so j mains we actually gave around 3 to 4 papers because there were the online papers as well as the offline papers so we gave i think 2015 and 2016 we gave around 3 to 4 papers for j mains for specific strategies for j mains and j advanced for j mains the main problem isn't the difficulty of the paper it's the time management because you only have 3 hours to do 90 questions so it's 2 minutes per question and it's difficult to even attempt all the questions in that actually you have to be really fast to be able to do that again again i come back to this practice is very important for that because a lot of the questions were very similar question types and most of them are not particularly new if you have enough practice as soon as you see a question you should know how to do it like that's how people are able to do questions in 2 minutes because they know how to do it already and they just have to do the calculations another thing about j mains is that there's uh, other mains ex- mains only chapters which are only in j mains not in j advanced and those are a little memorization heavy i would just say uh, if you're in cbsc you have to do those chapters anyways for boards so do them properly there's nothing wrong with doing those chapters but if you're not in cbsc i would say uh, just study those chapters from ncert a few uh, two to three days uh, probably around a week before j mains and revise it 
two to three years before because uh, those chapters might because if you have studied those chapters those questions are very easy but if you haven't studied those you'll have no idea what to do so if you you can if you just spend a few hours in doing those chapters that's free marks which can be the difference between qualifying for advanced and not qualifying for advanced for specific uh, for je advanced uh, as i said mostly i did chemistry first then math then physics and it was a very fluid way of doing it you can do it whichever way you want to but don't keep your system very rigid like i have to do it in this order i have to do all the questions like this and this and this be a little fluid because if the paper isn't how you expect it to be and the paper suppose you do physics first and math and chemistry but if chemistry is the easiest and physics ends up being the hardest you spend too much time on physics and you don't have enough time to spend on chemistry and you lose marks in chemistry that you really shouldn't have you get a little more marks in physics that way but not nearly enough because physics was difficult anyways so you need to be a little fluid if you do suppose if you do physics first if you realize that physics is difficult then just go through it fast leave more questions and move on to the other subjects as fast as possible and do physics towards the end that again now thing that been asked by many people how do you judge if a question is difficult again i say that comes from practice practice is very important to be able to crack je without practice it's pretty much impossible while you're doing je you also have to uh do your 12th at the same time not exactly at the same time a few months before the je all the state board people their exams they have to spend around 2 to 3 weeks just because the syllabus is completely different from the je syllabus but if you're in cbsc or uh, it's really good at this point you might have been very angry towards being cbsc throughout the whole two years because the 75% attendance being minimum that actually that might affect some people i suppose because a lot of people don't like to go to school but that's a completely different matter but this is the time where being cbsc actually makes a really positive impact because the whole syllabus is the exact same as the je main syllabus at least for physics chemistry and maths you only really have to study english and your fifth subject and even english you can manage english if just studying two or three days just the days before the board exam if you study english you'll be able to manage as long as you have at least read the chapters before those few days you'll be able to manage english and your fifth subject that fifth subject really depends if you have taken an, an intensive fifth subject then you'll have to study properly and spend some time on it but if you have taken a relatively easy fifth subject then you can manage uh, another thing to note after the mains has happened and after you have gotten the mains results what happens is you have around a month and a half to prepare for advanced at that point you have probably already done the whole syllabus and even revised it at least once so at that point you just have to systematically revise everything everything that's in the advanced syllabus because what happens because you can't really skip out on any chapters for advanced because if you skip a couple chapters then they might just give three or four questions out of that chapter and you have, you don't remember what to do in that so just make a complete plan on how you are going to revise for each subject during this time you have to be willing to spend up to more than 10 hours every day because it's this is the crunch time and after jee is over you can do whatever you want because your two years you have spent on this one exam and these are the final moments this is the last leg of your preparation and this is the most important leg as well because you have to completely revise everything in around one and a half month so it's not easy but it's not just revision as well you have to 
if you want to do well you want to be able to give a lot of mock tests as well you want to do you want to solve as many questions as you can another tip i would like to give is for social media at some point i was using facebook little more than i should have so to do to just remove that all i did is just i remove the facebook app from my uh, home page that's all i did and that automatically reduced my usage you can there's nothing wrong with deleting your app or deactivating your account i just didn't want to do that just in case i need to access it for some reason or another whatsapp i personally used whatsapp to the very last day because whatsapp whatsapp is something that depending on how you use it it can be really good or it can be really bad because with whatsapp you can directly ask your teachers doubts you can directly ask your friends doubts you can discuss a lot of things discuss a lot of subjects and topics and that if you use whatsapp for those things then whatsapp can be uh, really really good but if you just spend your whole day chatting and wasting your time then that's a different story in that case you should probably delete whatsapp from your phone hopefully all these steps help you and uh, all the best everyone for your main well advanced thanks for watching if this was helpful for you please like and subscribe keep watching daily knowledge tracks